and how the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus makes. Oh, now let us have. Oh, let us tell. Oh, He will hear. And I know, and I know, He will answer. And in the you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. You know it's all right. It's all right. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Once the little talk with Jesus makes it right. You know it's all right. It's all right. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, now let us have. Why don't you let us tell? Oh, he will hear. And I know, and I know he will answer. Now when you feel as your heart. And in the you to will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Man. Good morning, University. Good morning. Oh, come on now. We turned changed the clocks back. It didn't, didn't change you back. Let's, let's try this again. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. You know, we got a, a bright, beautiful day here. God woke us up. Yes, sir. Regardless of what we did with the clocks. That's right. And I didn't notice anybody that had been out there in the parking lot for two hours that turned their clocks the wrong way. It's kind of funny how that works. We, <laughs> we can come late when we change the clocks, but we can't come early. <laughs> I don't understand that, but anyway, we're here. We'd like to extend our deepest sympathy to Sister Beverly Hood for the loss of her mother. Let's pray with her and her family. Also extend our sympathy to the Ladras Rodriguez uh, family for the loss of her husband, Edgar, who expired last Sunday evening at Cleveland Clinic. Uh, continue to pray for that family. Sister Nancy Perry is requesting prayer for her brother Ronnie Cotton, he's in the ICU at Cleveland Clinic. The next covered, of love, covered with Love clothing giveaway is Saturday, November the 18th from 10 a.m. till noon. Let's uh, support this work. And uh, we ask donations for gently used clothing and be placed in the boxes in the foyer. Our next food giveaway is Tuesday, November 21st, from 10 till noon. The third Sunday fellowship is November 19th at Garden Valley Church of Christ at 7711 Kinsman Road, we're also asking prayers for Brother and Sister McLean, Sister Annie Nelson's niece, Nicole, Sister Nicole Bird, who is preparing for an upcoming procedure, Sister Sandy Pollard, who's recovering from surgery, Sister Ruth Wade and her friend Barbara Green, who is having surgery at Hillcrest. Uh, also pray for Lydia Murphy and family, Sister Brenda Taylor Hines, Brother Melvin Flowers, Brother Arnold Patterson, Sister Peggy Jackson, Sister Pat Gaines, and continued prayers for all of our bereaved families for the loss of loved ones. On our roster this morning, myself, Brother Hicks calling to worship Brother Jerome McDuffie is leading us in song this morning. Meditation, Brother Carl Pope. Prayer will be D Brother Douglas McHenry. Naturally, our sermon will be from 
Brother McLean, I think he uh, got started a little early here uh, in, but, uh, at Sunday school, but, but I'm, I'm sure that at the rate that we're going already this morning, it's going to be a, a great lesson. Uh, response facilitator will be Brother uh, Donald Nelson, one of our elders. Communion from Brother Ray Knight. I'll be back for offering. And Brother Justin Shields uh, will deliver our uh, benediction. I'd like to share with you from Colossians, the third chapter, the 25th verse. Or the 15th verse. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you are called one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that you have blessed us with another week, with another day. That you have woke us up and put in our hearts a desire to come to this place to worship you. For you are God, the only God. And you desire, you desire and deserve all praise and glory. Father, as we continue in this service, we ask that everything that we do and say will be directed toward you. We ask, Heavenly Father, that we will lift you up and that you will find acceptable all the things that we do and things that we say. Bless your manservant that he'll have recall of the knowledge that you have imparted to him, that he can pass it to us, and that we will all live your word. We thank you, Father, for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray for all things. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, baby. <laughs> Who has the clicker? Can you put that to it's in my veins? I want to warm y'all up a little bit before we go to that song. All right. It's good to be here today, amen? amen. All right. It's in my veins, it's in my veins, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. While the blood is running warm in my veins, oh, in my veins. Well, it's in my veins, in my veins, well, it's in my veins, it's in my veins. While the blood, while the blood is running warm in my veins, oh, in my veins. I'm going to pray a little bit over here, and I'm going to pray a little bit over there. While the blood is running warm in my veins, oh, in my veins. While the blood, while the blood is running warm in my veins, oh, in my veins, I'm gonna pray a little bit over here, and I'm gonna pray a little bit over there. While the blood is running warm in my veins, oh, in my veins. While the blood, while, while the blood is running warm in my veins, oh, in my veins, 
I'm gonna shout a little bit over here And I'm gonna shout a little bit over there While the blood is running warm In my veins, oh, in my veins I'm gonna clap a little bit over here And I'm gonna clap a little bit over there While the blood is running warm In my veins, oh, in my veins I'm gonna stump a little bit over here And I'm gonna stump a little bit over there While the blood is running warm In my veins, oh, in my veins While the blood is running warm, while the blood, while the blood is running warm, while the blood, the blood is running warm in my veins, oh, in my veins. Amen. All right. Now we're gonna try this one. You ready, brothers? Heart. Heart is in my 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 heart. Heart, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. Oh, don't you know it's in my heart? Heart is in my heart. 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 Heart, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? Heart is in my heart. 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 Heart, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? Heart is in my heart. 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 Heart, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? It's in my heart. Heart is in my heart. Heart is in my heart. It's in my heart. Heart is in my heart. Heart is in my heart. It's in my heart. Heart is in my heart. Lord, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know on, it's in my heart? It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Heart is in my heart. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Heart is in my heart. Heart is in my heart. Heart, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Heart is in my heart. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Heart is in my heart. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Heart, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Let us stand, please. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. Let us stand, please. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. You know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? Heart is in my heart. 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 Uh, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? Heart is in my heart. 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 You know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? Heart is in my heart. 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 You know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? Heart is in my heart. 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 
hardest in my heart. Serve the Lord. You know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? Hardest in my heart. 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 Uh, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. Don't you know it's in my heart? Heart is in my heart. 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 the outros. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. I'll be serving the Lord. Just tenors. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. I'll be serving the Lord. Just bass. It's in my heart. Heart is 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 in my heart. Heart, you know that I'll be serving the Lord. All right. Jesus Christ, I, our Lord and Savior, I greet everyone here today, University Church, my brothers and sisters. Our meditation is shown on the screen above, and I'd like you to join me as I begin. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto the life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. given all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and truthful knowledge. Our scripture today is to be taken from Psalms 30, verse 1 through 5. Psalms 30, 1 through 5. Psalms 30, they have Psalms 20 up here, but it's Psalms 30, <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. Join with me as I begin to read, and you can read along. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth 
but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but the joy cometh in the morning. Y'all doing all right this morning? You know, I, I know we all go through struggles and we all have a lot of things on our minds but right now we need our mind to be focused right here on the Lord amen, amen. got a beautiful Sunday morning thank God that he allowed us to get an extra hour I didn't know how that felt but was glad I got it so if you here because you want to serve the Lord let us sing and sing praises to his name amen amen amen, amen. 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 all right all right Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Oh, each victory will help you. Some others to win. Fight manfully on word Passion subdue, oh, look ever to Jesus. I know that He will carry you. All you gotta do is just ask the Savior to Oh, and comfort. I know, I know that He. Savior to oh, help you and comfort. And I know, I know that He is. I know that He will carry you through. To Him, they that will come, may God. Give it the crown, oh, through faith we shall conquer those often cast down. He who is our Savior, our strength will renew. to Jesus, I know that he will carry you, all you gotta do is just ask the Savior to help and comfort, I know, I know that he is willing to aid I know he will carry you through. All you gotta do is just ask, ask. The Savior to help Oh, won't you, you just comfort? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know that He will carry you through. Father, in heaven, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God, and beside you there is none other. Holy and reverend is your name. We humbly bow before your throne of mercy this morning. 
with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanking you, Lord, to raise us up this morning and allowing us to be here present, worshiping with the church before your throne. Lord God Almighty, we sanctify ourselves this morning in holy worship, laying aside all cares. We bow before you in humble submission. We pray, Heavenly Father, that what we do here this day will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight and come up before your throne as a sweet-smelling savor. Lord, we ask you this morning that you will bless those among us who may be sick and afflicted and those among us too who are mourn Comfort them, O oh Lord. Comfort us all, Lord. Grant unto us all that we may be wise in understanding what the perfect will of the Lord is. Let each of us look upon each other and understand that we are brothers and sisters in your kingdom. We come before you in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, asking you, O oh Lord, that we always be aware how that we are supposed to be holy, even as you are holy. We ask you, Lord, to bless all the churches of, of Christ in the greater Cleveland area, the church at Garden Valley, the church at Mount Pleasant, Metro, Euclid, Center, Boulevard, East 89, Lorraine Avenue, Warren Road, Lake and Walnut, East Broad Street. I pray, Lord, we pray that we all endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That brotherly love be without dissimulation, and that we love one another fervently out of a pure heart. We pray that our singing this morning, our prayer, our giving, and our message this morning will be one that will cause someone who do not share with us in our re religious conviction come asking what must I do to be safe. Lord, we consecrate ourselves in holy worship this morning as we continue. We pray that the message that we hear will prick us in our heart and cause us to do better in the future than we have in the past. Forgive us of our many sins. And those who are sick among us, raise them up, Lord. Raise them up, and if any have sinned, please forgive them. Let your holy presence continue to dwell with us as we continue forward in this morning's worship service. We ask this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The 
at the church say amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right. Before our loving brother, our servant, Brother McCain, come up and deliver his message, I have a question for y'all. Who are going through troubles right now? Raise your hands. If troubles is in your life, raise your hands. But who know that Jesus will fix it? Who know that Jesus will fix it? All right. Well, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Oh, so much trouble. I have to cry sometimes. I gotta cry sometimes. A little weak at night. A little weak at night. But that's alright. Right. I heard him say, Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. After a while. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I, I have to cry, cry sometimes. Sometime. So much trouble, trouble, trouble in my way. way. I have to cry sometimes. I gotta cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's alright. Right. I heard him say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus he, he will, will fix, fix it. it. My mind, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus he, he will, will fix it. it. After a while, after a while, I stepped in the furnace, stepped in the furnace a long time ago, long time ago. Shadrach and me, Shadrach and me, and the Bendigo, and the Bendigo. They weren't worried, they weren't worried, but this I know. I heard him say, Jesus. Oh, I heard him say, Jesus, Jesus, he will my, fix my, it. My, 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 Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. One of these old mornings, Jesus, I he say, will Jesus, fix it. It won't be long. Jesus, I he will fix it. I say, you come it. looking for me. Jesus, he will fix I, it. And I'll be gone. Jesus, I he say, will gone fix on it. On the Jesus, he will fix it. To sing and shout. Jesus, he will fix it. I said it won't be nobody up there. Jesus, he will fix it. I said to turn me out. Jesus, he will fix it. I said I wonder, 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 do you believe? Jesus, he will fix it. I said that Jesus Christ, he died. Jesus, he will fix it. He died on that cross. Jesus, he will fix it. I said just for you. And I sin. Jesus, I say, will you do fix you, do you, do you, do you believe? Jesus, he will fix it. I wonder, do you believe? Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. After a while. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime but even though I have to cry sometime Jesus not only will fix it he has already fixed a lot in all of our lives brother Jerome thank you so much for leading us in praises to God Almighty we are thankful to brother Hicks for ushering us into the presence of God for Brother Carlton Pope for reading the meditation and, and the scripture. And then Brother Douglas McHenry for leading us to the throne of grace and prayer. Thank all of you for your participation in worship thus far. Those who are in the audience, those who might be watching on Facebook, either live or later on or on YouTube, uh, especially if you're not members of the Church of Christ, thank you for joining us. We want you to realize we are a people who love the Lord and endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. We believe there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God, and Father of all who's above all, through all, and in us all. If you have any questions about anything that you see up here, please don't hesitate to ask us. Peter says, we're to sanctify the Lord God in our hearts and be ready always to give an answer concerning the hope that is within us with meekness and with fear and that we are, are ready to do. 
For all who were in Sunday school this morning, thank you for, for your presence. Uh, I, I promise you we won't have the same problem that we had earlier. Uh, my watch had stopped at uh, 9 uh, 30, I mean 10 30. Uh, Brother McHenry and I just kept looking at it and said, oh, I got plenty of time, I got plenty of time. And then all of a sudden we realized it was 10.47. Oops, I've gone over time, but uh, the class was so kind to me and I just appreciate your input, your, your activity. I want to encourage other members of the body of Christ here to be here for uh, Bible, Bible study. Before I get into to the message, I, I said something this morning prior to teaching the class that I want to say uh, in this August assembly, uh, I am thankful for our elders, Brother Frank Barnes, Brother Donald Nelson, Brother Greg Shields, and, and I'm just kind of a creature of habit. I call their names in alphabetical order. I'm, I'm just OCD-ish. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, but it's not that I'm putting one above the other. That's just kind of how I am. I'm a creature of habit. But uh, I just want to say that I am thankful to them. And on last week, we found ourselves in a very unique situation. Uh, there was a family who we had been informed would be coming to Cleveland, who would be in the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, they had been here for a, a few weeks, and unfortunately, Brother Rodriguez uh, began to get worse rather than better. Uh, there were uh, the elders and I and some of the members, uh, Sister Beverly Hood, uh, was also uh, taking care of her mother and took time to go visit the Rodriguez's when she was there at the hospital to visit her, her, her mom. And uh, there were others, I'm sure, who were going by uh, to visit with those that we were aware of that, that were sick. Well, on last Sunday evening, uh, Brother Donald received a call uh, that he had taken a turn for the worse. He, he left uh, to go to the hospital to be with Sister Rodriguez uh, and he kept us informed as to what was going on. Uh, he had said to me uh, when we talked, he said, well, I'm sorry you had to leave. No, you were exactly where you need to be. Uh, be there with her, shepherding her through that trying time. I went by the hospital following morning, I mean, following evening worship. He was still there with her. They were there working on Brother Rodriguez, prayed with them. Then I went on home. It had been a long day for me. Uh, but Brother Donald stayed with Sister Rodriguez, and at some point, Sister Annie joined him. Uh, they had already been doing a lot of visiting with the family. Unfortunately, Brother Rodriguez passed away uh, early Monday morning. And even on the next day, Brother Donald and Sister Annie, along with Sister Beverly Hood, uh, they met her for brunch at the hotel just to comfort her and to encourage her and, and stayed with her. Uh, until basically she got on a plane to head back to Hollywood without her beloved husband. I mean, Hollywood, Florida, not Hollywood, California. Hollywood, Florida, uh, without her beloved husband. Uh, and I just want to make sure that you are aware uh, that they did that. Uh, he did not tell me to say this. He did not tell me that I needed to toot his horn. I just think the church needs to be aware when the elders are doing those kinds of things. There have been times I have called uh, after I had gotten a call and I made it, and I have been weary from preaching all day and teaching. And I called Brother Frank Barnes and he went to the hospital to be with a family who was anticipating death. And Brother Greg has also gone and taken care of situations uh, that he became aware of. They have been, uh, they take, people home who come to our services who don't have transportation and they were not aware that they needed transportation but they have willingly transported people back and forth uh, shepherding those who come under their perfume so I just wanted to say that and I want the church to say amen I, uh, we don't need to do a hand clap of praise I'm, I'm not into all of that uh, the church says just say amen the Bible says say amen Amen means so be it that we are in agreement. And I just say a hearty amen and ask you to continue to lift them as well as our, uh, their wives and their families and our deacons and their wives and their families because they do a whole lot of work that you don't see, uh, the deacons do. Uh, 
and there are things that they do uh, that we are glad, I, at least I think the elders are glad, I know I'm glad that they handle them because when I try to fix them, they get messed up. So I'm, go I'm going to always stay in my lane, but I just appreciate them and all of you. There are many of you who do a number of things in order to promote the well-being of this congregation, and I want you to know uh, that I am thankful. But that is my commercial. You all got me up in plenty of times where I should not have to preach until midnight, and so I am going to get right into this lesson from Psalm chapter 30, verse 1 through 5. So turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Psalm 30, verse 1 through 5, and then coming from the King James Version. Uh, when you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it yet, say wait. Okay, amen. That means you are, you are there. Psalm 30, verse 1 through 5 reads this way. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. From this text, I want to speak from the subject, Weeping Nights and Joyful Mornings. Weeping Nights and Joyful Mornings. Pray with me. All wise and all merciful Father who art in heaven, thank you for this day and all that we have been able to experience. Thank you for life. We know it's in you. We move and live and have our very being. Thank you for all of our brethren who've led us in various aspects of worship up to this point in time. Thank you for those who will lead us in other aspects of worship following this message. Brother Ray Knight, Brother Amos Hicks, Brother Donald Nelson, and Brother Justin Shields. I thank you for the privilege of joining all of my brethren in leading your people in worship. And our desire is that our worship has been and will continue to be according to your word, your will, and in spirit and in truth. Fill me with your Holy Spirit as I proclaim your word. May you speak your message through your messenger. I hide in the shadow of the cross. May I give you glory. May I lift up Jesus. May I edify the saints. And may I plant the word of the kingdom in the hearts of those who are not yet your children so that they might respond in humble obedience before it's everlasting and eternally too late. I now do what I've asked the church to do. I lift our elders into your presence, Brother Frank Barnes, Brother Donald Nelson, Brother Greg Shields, their beloved wives and their children and extended families, which you bless them in all the ways you see they stand in need of. I lift our deacons into your presence. Brother Freddie Gibson, Brother Anthony Slade, their wives, their children, and their extended families. I ask you to bless them in their ministry work. And I lift myself and my beloved wife, Linda, and our extended family, and ask you to continue to use me to teach and to preach your word, and that I might always study to show myself approved unto you, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, handling aright the word of truth. Use me mightily on this day. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Weeping nights and joyful mornings. Have you ever felt like giving up? Throwing in the towel. Have you ever felt like every time you turn around, something else is broken or late? 
or something is wrong with something or somebody in your life. Have you ever laid in the bed at night and your problems have gotten so bad that it even seems like the darkness of the night has even turned its back on you? So you lie awake in bed wondering, will the night ever end? As I look out into the congregation, I see two types of people. Some of you may be tall, short, or an average height, but I, I still see two types of people. Some of you may be brown skin, dark skin, light skin, red, yellow, black, or, or, or white, but I still only see two types of people. The two types of people I see are those who are going through weeping nights and those that are in joyful mornings. And since everyone in here is in one of these two categories, I, I should have everyone's attention as God speaks to us about our weeping nights and our joyful mornings. Anyone who has been living for some time or if you're at an age of understanding, you know that, that life is not easy. There are some people who fool us because they only express the emotions of joy and happiness, but life isn't easy. Our accomplishments may outnumber our failures, but life still isn't easy. And because life isn't easy, sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down. The person sitting right next to you may be going through a weeping night while you may be in a joyful morning. Or perhaps you're both going through weeping nights or you're both in joyful mornings. Whichever you're going through, the fact remains that we will or have already gone through weeping nights and joyful mornings. If I were to poll the congregation, I believe that 100% would say they would rather experience joyful mornings than experience weeping nights. But I want to remind us today that we must understand that it's those weeping nights and joyful mornings that go hand in hand. In other words, they work together. You can't have one without the other. I know that it doesn't sit well with us, but remember we've already established that life isn't easy. And if I'm going to shout for joy in the morning, then sometimes I must weep through the night. If I want to experience bright joy in the morning, then I must endure nights of distress. This morning I want to look again at this word of the psalmist David in verse 5. We often quote this text, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. But we should not remove that text from its context. This verse is a word of whispering hope that shouts its confidence. It's the testimony of a man who knows what it is to be in sorrow's valley and who has himself lingered in the very shadow of death. He is one whose life has been stained by the indelible ink of sin and now is able to rejoice that his sin has been forgiven and his iniquity has been pardoned. But he knows that he must weep through the night. David, who is the author of this psalm, had his fair share of weeping nights and joyful mornings. He went through weeping nights when King Saul was seeking to take his life, but joyful mornings when God finally set him upon the throne as king over Israel. He went through weeping nights when his adultery with Bathsheba was hidden, but he experienced joyful mornings once he confessed his sin to God and God forgave him of that sin. David experienced weeping nights when his own son Absalom chased him from his throne, but he experienced joyful mornings when he returned to Jerusalem. Because of David's joyful mourning, he was able to write this psalm of thanksgiving and celebrations of God's deliverance and say, weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We're not quite sure from which experience in life David wrote this psalm, but we do know that David had a reason to praise God. 
We know that David had endured some weeping nights and because God brought him out, he was able to praise God for the joyful mornings. I, I want to give you three ways that you and I can have joy in the midst of our nights of weeping. And the first thing I lift from this text is that we must look back over our lives. If you examine the text, it says in verse 1, I will extol or lift up to glorify on purpose, intensive or intentional action. I will extol thee, O Lord. Why? For thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my fools rejoice over me. You know, sometimes I sit and I think that I could just stop for a moment. No matter what's going on, no matter what I'm going through, no matter how dark the night may seem, if I could just sit back and think about what God has already done for me, I would have nothing to be sad about. I'm a firm believer that if we can just look back over our lives, that though we might be weeping at the present moment, we might have those tears dry up because we know what God has already done and so we know that soon joy is going to come in the morning. We could be like David and have a whole lot to be excited about because he's lifted us up over some circumstances and up out of some situations, some situations that we had no business getting ourselves into. Nevertheless, God delivered us and brought us through. Watch this. We see David in our text taking a trip back down memory lane, reflecting on just how good God had been to him. David had good reason to praise God. And I want to give you five reasons out of this text why David praised God and why he reminds us to do so today. Reason number one is God had lifted him up. Notice the past tense. David is thanking God for what he has already done. Reason number two, God had not allowed his enemies to triumph over him. Reason number three in verse two, God had healed his body. Reason number four in verse three, God saved his soul. And reason number five in verse three, God kept him alive and delivered him from certain defeats in battle. This particular psalm of thanksgiving is for the great deliverance that God had worked out in David's life. David could really praise God for knowing that his anger lasts for a moment, but God's favor lasts a lifetime. In our highlighted scripture for today, David gives us something to shout about. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Most of you with study Bibles will notice the caption or the headings in your Bible probably states that David wrote this psalm at the dedication of the house of David. Some versions say he wrote it at the dedication of the temple. Though there's nothing in this psalm that has particular reference to that occasion at all. Well, I'm under the persuasion that David did pen this psalm during that dedication, but it was in direct response to God restoring his health after a three-day plague God put on him because of his sin in numbering the people according to the notes in the NIV study Bible. I think that we need to stick a pen right here and deal with one of the problems that causes the night seasons in our life. The problem that causes our weeping at night many times is the problem of sin. Well, you might say, well, how did David sin? If you're taking notes, write this down in your margins, or if you're smarter than I am, write it down on the blackboard of your mind. 1 Chronicles chapter 21 and verse 1 through 30. For there, the Bible says in verse 1, and Satan stood up against Israel that provoked David to number Israel. Verse 2 says, And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go, number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan. And bring the number of them to me that I may know it. I want you to know from this text we realize that sin has consequences. Dropping down to verse 7 of 1 Chronicle 21. And God was displeased with this thing. Therefore he smote Israel. And if you look closely at 1 Chronicles chapter 21, when you do like David and you get in the me and I business and think that your sin doesn't affect anybody else, well, verse 7 paints a different picture. 
Verse 8 says, And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing, but now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Well, the eyes have it. Notice just in what we have read in these verses alone, we can count five eyes and one me and the I and the me are the same. They both equal selfishness and pride. The point that I want you to understand is that five plus one equals six. And in Revelation 13, verse 17 and 18, six is the number of man. David had become full of himself. And because of him becoming full of himself, he sinned by numbering the people. He was more concerned about what he could see rather than what God could do. David sinned because he did the man thing, leaned on his own understanding, decided to do things his way instead of relying on God. He was more concerned with the number of his men than the power of God. When man wants to do things his way, it always results in sin, and sin always has consequences. Watch the consequences in 1 Chronicle 21 and verse number 9. And the Lord spake unto Gad, David seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them that I may do it unto thee. Verse 11, so Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, choose thee, verse 12, either three years famine or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtaketh thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angels, angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coast of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. In verse 13 it says, And David said unto Gad, I'm in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hand of man. And verse 14 says, So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel 70,000 men. 70,000 men in Israel died because of David's sin as punishment because of his sin by God. You see, brother and sister, sin has consequences. I didn't coin the phrase, but I heard that someone has said the sin takes you further than you ever intended to go, keeps you longer than you ever intended to be kept, and costs you more than you ever intended to pay. So in reading 1 Chronicle 21, the correlation between it and Psalm 90, I believe that this event is what prompted David to sing this song of thanksgiving in our text. But flipping back to Psalm number 30, he says in verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, verse 3, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. But I can't help but to think that David also took a trip back down memory lane. And that he probably thought about how God had given him the strength when he was a little boy to kill the lion. And the bear that troubled his flock in 1 Samuel 17, verse 34 through 37. I'm sure that David thought from time to time about how God had given him victory over Goliath with one smooth rock in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 49. In 1 Samuel 17, 50, it tells us how God gave him victory over the Philistines and his other enemies. God even protected David from the evil hand of Saul, who day after day tried to kill him. I can't help but to believe that while penning the psalm of thanksgiving for his house, that David thought back on the many days and nights he spent hiding in caves and sleeping in the wilderness as he ran for his life from Saul and how God brought him through it all. David had great reason to praise God. But what about you? What, what, what about me? Look back over your life and see how God has delivered you over and over again. Some of you may be looking at your present situation and be apt to think that God has abandoned you or forsaken you. Maybe you think he's forgotten you, but I came to tell you that he's there all the while doing what he's always done, and that is to deliver you from the many dangers seen and unseen. 
As I look back over my life, it does me good to remember the times when surely God was working to protect me. It may have been an illness, most assuredly. He was protecting me in my car when on one occasion another car ran the stop sign barrel into the passenger side of my car and my car stopped just short of crashing into a large tree. And it didn't hit me until I got home that night as I was laying in my bed that I could have been dead sleeping in my grave and I broke down and began to cry and thank God that I was still among the land of, of the living. I think about the time when I worked at Boys Republic and I went out swimming with the Boy Scout troop and I got caught in the weeds underneath and got out. And the next week, the strongest boy among the group, Robert Henderson, strong as an ox, got caught in the same stuff and he died and we had to call his family and tell them he didn't make it out and the only reason God brought me out was because of God's amazing grace. So don't look at me funny when I cry sometimes. Don't think I'm crazy when I'm talking about God's goodness. You see, when I look back over my life, I get excited because God has been so good to me, so good that I just can't tell it all. God has been better to me than I have been better to myself. Have you ever considered that you may be the cause of your weeping? I don't know about you, but I realize sometimes I've had to weep because of my own sins. I've had to weep because of my own wrongs. I've had to weep because of the things I've done. And even though I have been weeping because of my wrongs, somehow, in some way, God still mine is able to come through and begin to wipe my tears and say, as long as you fall down in a spirit of repentance, I'll I'll pick you up and you can go on your way rejoicing. Weeping nights turn into joyful mornings. The longer we dwell on the night, the farther we remain from the joyful morning. And do you know that you may be the reason why you're still having weeping nights? If you're trying to fix a situation that you have no control over, then as long as you do that, you will remain in your weeping night. Maybe you haven't completely turned your problems over to God. If you haven't, you will remain in your weeping night. When we allow God to have control in our weeping nights, then we will be able to clearly see the joyful morning approaching. But not only, number one, do we need to look back over our lives. Number two, David says, the second way that you can have joy in the midst of your darkness is to remember and give thanks. He said in verse number four, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So we need to look back over life, that's our past, then we need to remember, and then we need to give thanks in the present. Verse four, he gives us two commands. He says, we're to praise God by singing, Number one, and we are to praise God by giving thanks. Now what I found interesting in the text is the fact that David had to command them to praise God. David had to command them to sing and to give thanks. Maybe, maybe God knew that we would need to be reminded to sing and praise him. And maybe God knew, and of course God is omniscient. That means he knows all things. Maybe we have these commands here because he knows that our songs would someday be sizzled in apathy and our praise to him would be paralyzed with our pride. We as Christians should be the most joyous people on the face of the earth. Why? Because... I read the story and I know how it ends. I hate to spoil it for you, but for those of you in despair, we get the victory. All we have to do is look back over our life, remember what God has done for us and give him the praise. Those two commands says sing and give thanks. Some of you may be able to relate to just what David is talking about here. You've been near death in the hospital or with an illness at home. You've come close in some other accident, yet through it all, God has delivered you out of the pit of pain. 
Maybe your deliverance had nothing to do with your physical well-being. But let me help you. You see, some of us have gotten so tripped up by prosperity, so much so that we've forgotten where God has brought us from. You see, the pride of prosperity has caused us to zip up our lips. And now we are too cute to praise God. We got too many clothes in our closets that have caused us to cancel our praise. The abundance of food in our cupboard has satisfied us to the point that we no longer hunger and thirst for righteousness. So that this doesn't happen to you, allow me to help you remember his goodness so that you too can praise him. You remember when you were flat broke and didn't know where the next meal was going to come from? Do you remember when you couldn't pay your bills and God brought you through? Do you remember when you didn't have two dimes to rub together or to buy your family a loaf of bread? Do you remember when you were lying on your back in that hospital room sick and you didn't think that you would ever get well? Do you remember when you used to have to wear hand-me-down clothes? Do, do you remember that job that you prayed for and now you want to quit that job? God has brought you through all those things and so much more. God has delivered some of you from failing marriages, broken childhoods, terrible past experiences. It was God who delivered you from those traumatic situations and now there is healing and wholeness and all he wants you to do is remember and give thanks. Allow me to help somebody this morning. Some of you have even given up on yourself. You are clutching lies that you believe for way too long. Somebody told you that you weren't good enough. Somebody told you you weren't smart enough, you weren't fast enough or pretty enough. Somebody here this morning may have even been told that you never measure up, that you are too fat, too short, too tall, too skinny, too slow, and even too dumb. Maybe mom and daddy weren't there for you and all your life you believe that you have to look out for yourself because you can't count on anyone else to be there for you. Well, I step by to tell you that God wants to deliver you from the pit of heartache and pain. That's what Jesus said when he walked this earth and he said in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19 the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken hearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So no matter what you're going through on this afternoon now, don't ever forget to praise him and give thanks for what he has brought you through. But the third way, and this is my last point, the third way that you can have joy in the midst of your darkness is to trust God for the results. We need to look back over our life, our past, then we need to remember and give thanks. That's our present and now we need to trust God for the results. Future. David not only gives us two commands, sing and praise God. He also gives us two reasons why we should sing and praise God. First reason is that God's anger is only for a moment. I can't think of a better reason to sing and praise God. And whether you want to admit it or not, God has every right to be angry with us. See, Romans 3.23 is still in your Bible unless you have ripped it out. And even if you rip it out of yours, there's millions of other Bibles you haven't gotten to yet. For all have sinned and come short of, of the, glory, the glory of God. But I really like the way Paul put it in Romans chapter 7 and verse number 24 after he said the good that I would do I find myself not doing and that that I don't want to do I find myself doing. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. But before that he said oh wretched man that I am. I'm going to sing and I'm going to praise him if I have to do it all by myself. Because I know that I could have been dead and gone and burning in the pit of hell had it not been for the kindled anchor, uh, anger of the Lord. Psalm 103 verse 8 says this, The Lord is merciful and gracious, 
slow, slow to anger, and plenteous in, in mercy. Aren't you all glad that he's slow to anger? You know how some of us are. We, we get mad at the drop of a hat. But the God that we serve is slow to anger and plenteous in, in mercy. But the second reason why we should sing and praise God is that God's joy is on the way. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in, in the morning. Have you ever been in such despair that you said to yourself, if I can just make it through the night. Let me suggest to you that the story of the Bible hangs on the hinges of some strange and unusual occurrences which took place in the night. I want to suggest that maybe God does some of his best teaching through encounters in the night. That maybe there are some lessons God has to teach at midnight hour that you can't absorb in the brilliance of the noonday sun. See, the Bible says Jacob wrestled with the angel in the night. God sent the death angel into Egypt in the night. Israel was led through the wilderness with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire in the night. Belshazzar saw a finger writing, Mene, Mene, Tekel, you fasten on his palace wall in the night. Jesus was born with the angels singing, glory to God in the highest. They were singing in the night. The disciples went fishing and caught nothing in the night. Nicodemus came to hold a conference with Jesus in the night. Jesus woke up, spoke to the waves, and told them, peace be still in the night. There was a prayer meeting in Philippi when Paul started to pray and Silas became the song leader and the jailhouse started to rock in the night. Judas betrayed Jesus in an old upper room that the gospel says when Judas went out, it was night. Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He prayed in the night. Jesus hung on the cross on Friday, and even though the clock of time said three in the afternoon, the clock of eternity said it was midnight. They tell me the sun refused to shine, and when the sun doesn't shine, it's night. I'm reminded of the story of some 2,000 years ago how there was another group of people who felt despair on every side. They were perplexed. They felt abandoned and they felt cast down. You remember this group who sat assembled in the upper room after Jesus was crucified. They were saddened because they had given their lives to this man, Jesus. They had given it all up. They gave up their jobs, their security, their futures just to follow him and put him on the throne. Then he went and got himself killed. And now they sat up there waiting and wondering and sad. Church, I want to tell you that there were three dark nights after Jesus was crucified. But joy came in the morning. You see, that's why we need to trust God for the results. That's what David said, weeping, weeping may endure for, for the night, but, but joy comes in the morning. And you might be looking at me right now saying, well, Brother McLean, that all sounds well and good, but you know, the night just seems to be so long. How long the night? 
Oh, I like to hear David say in Psalm 91 verse 5, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, for the arrow that lieth by day. I like to hear Jeremiah say in Lamentations 3 verse 22 and 23, His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. All right, Brother McLean, that's all right. I know all of that is true, but I've been waiting on joy a long time. I want to know how long is my night going to be? Well, well, I'm glad you asked that question because I I couldn't finish this sermon without answering that question. I I know there's a better day coming, but how long is the night? I know one day every day will be Sunday, but how long is the night? I know that God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform, but how long is the night? I know all things work together for good for those who love the Lord, but how long is the night? I know I need to wait on the Lord and be of good courage, but how long is this night? I know Jesus is near the comfort and cheer just when I need him most, but how long is my night? I know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal, but how long is my night? I know he knows just how much we can bear, but how long is my night? I know there's a bright side somewhere, but I still need to know how long is my night. Well, all I can tell you is that I'm learning that the longer my night, the less time I have to wait. You can't run through the night. You can't skip over the night. But you can't avoid the night. You've got to endure the night. And Jesus said in Matthew 10, 22, the race is not given to the swift and to the strong, but to him that endureth to the end. If you want to know how long the night is, I can't give you a chronological time. But I can tell you this, it's not long. The same God who closes the curtain of the night is the same God who opens the curtain of the morning. How long? Not long. Because he promised one day to wipe every tear from every eye. How long? Not long. In fact, it says soon one morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. How long? I I don't know, but not long. Because he promised a city with a tree of life for the healing of the nations. And in that city, there'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more sadness, no more sighing, no more dying. And Revelation 21, 22 says, there'll be no night there. There was crying in that upper room for a short while. But there was rejoicing on Sunday morning. There was doubt on Saturday night. But there was assurance on Sunday morning. They were perplexed when they thought about the cross. But they found the answers when they considered the empty grave. They were cast down all weekend. But they were lifted up when Jesus showed up and walked through the door. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. I want to tell you that the greatest morning there ever was came on a Sunday morning in a little country halfway around the world. In fact, in a little country halfway around the world where right now the Israelis and the Palestinians are fighting over a piece of land that one day won't even exist anymore because when the trump of God shall sound, time that has always been won't be anymore and there'll be no more earth, no more heaven, that all of that's going to be burned up with fervent heat and going to be cast away. But there is a morning that's coming when the group of disheartened men and women who thought their lives were over. Let me tell you how joy started that morning. It started with a woman who chose to get up early Sunday morning to be with the Lord. 
And in Mark 16, 9 and 10, it says, Now when he was risen early on the first day of the week, Sunday morning, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven devils. She went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. On that morning, Mary chose to get up early. And as she went to the tomb to see Jesus, she got more than she bargained for. You see, she was walking along expecting to find a dead Jesus. Wrapped in grave clothes. Buried in a borrowed tomb. But she met the risen Savior. She went in sorrow. But she ran back to the others full of joy. She walked along in despair and defeat. But she returned that morning full of hope and power for living. What I want to remind all of us on this afternoon. That that same Jesus is still alive. He has risen and he is with us right now on this afternoon. He wants to meet you and save your sin-sick soul. He wants to bring joy to your mourning, hope for your despair, power for your lies, peace for your anxiety, truth for your lies, healing for your hurting, rest for the weary. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Jesus wants to comfort in the midst of crisis. Help in the midst of hopelessness. Give you peace in the midst of perplexity. Solution in the midst of problems. Stability for our stumbling. Victory for our battles. Deliverance from our defeats. Forgiveness for our faults. Faith for our fears. And light for our darkness. So I encourage you to look back over your life. Remember and give thanks to God for what he has done for you. For truly he's done great things and he is worthy of your praise. I know that many of you may be going through your night season right now. Nevertheless, I want you to rest assured God knows about them and God truly cares. Your situation may seem dark, but just think back on the darkest day ever in the history of mankind and God's knowledge of it. Luke chapter 23 verse 44 and 45 says it was about the sixth hour. There was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. During this darkness The religious leaders thought they had rid themselves of Jesus. During this darkness, the adversary, Satan, may have thought he had killed the Son of God, won the victory that he has always sought for in order to exalt himself above God. If Satan had only known that he had sealed his doom, as I referred to in Sunday school this morning, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse number 8, it says, that none of the princes of this world knew. Meaning, had they known that by putting Jesus on that cross, they would have been signing their own death warrant. But not only had none of the princes of this world know, the one who got in Judas didn't know. The one who got in the Pharisees didn't know. The one who got in the Sadducees didn't know. The one who got in the Roman soldiers did not know. The one who got in Pilate with his old weak knees and no backbone didn't know. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So that means to me that Calvary was not a defeat but a victory. Yes, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning because of what Jesus did for us on Calvary. Joy comes in the morning, early Sunday morning. Jesus got up with all power. I'm just so thankful to God that he said, I've got it all. Because when he said, I've got it all, A-L, that means that I ain't got none. That means you ain't got none. That means the Pope ain't got none. That means Reverend Sounding Brass ain't got none. That means some religious council ain't got none. 
That means that Donald Trump ain't got none. That means that Joe Biden ain't got none. The White House ain't got none. The Congress ain't got none. The bank ain't got none. The IRS ain't got none. The mayor ain't got none. Ain't nobody got the kind of power that Jesus got. He said, I've got all power in heaven and in earth. I'm the only one who can take you from earth to glory. Weeping may endure for a night. Yes, sir. But joy. 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 It's going to come in the morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How long the night, Brother McClain? I don't know. But however long the night is, you keep holding on. <laughs> And if you keep holding on and you keep looking forward to Jesus coming back again, if he comes while you're still alive one day, the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ are going to rise to meet the Lord in the air. And then those of us who are alive are going to be caught up and join them in the air. And there shall we ever be with the Lord. Yes, sir. Free. You might be in your night right now. But morning's coming. Yes, right. You might be crying right now. But morning's coming. Yes, sir. As long as you believe in the one who said, I do not, no one takes my life from me. Yes, See, Brother Greg, that's the good part about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are a lot of folks who say to me, say, well, you know, I don't know why y'all believe in a dead man on the stage. I don't believe in a dead man on the stage. They say, I don't know why you believe in a man who couldn't stay alive and they took his life from him. He said, nobody takes my life from me. I lay it down in order that I might take it back again. That means that he didn't spill his blood at Calvary. He shed his blood at Calvary because when you spill something, it's an accident. And it was no accident that Jesus went to Calvary. Great. Yes, sir. That had been ordained before the very foundation of the world. Yes, sir. Free. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning. Some of y'all folk worried about whether the world is 10 million years old or 10,000 years old. It doesn't matter how old the world is. You living in it. And while you living in it, you need to get right with the one who created it. Because one day this earth is going to be burned up. And you're going to have to stand before his judgment. And there are only two verdicts that are going to be handed down. Either he's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Or he's going to say, Say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Never knew you. <laughs> yes, sir. And then the bad part about it, Brother McHenry. The text says weeping may endure for a night. And joy is coming in the morning. But everybody who goes to hell is going to keep on weeping. Mm. 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 There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes, of teeth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not only will there be weeping and gnashing of teeth, in heaven there will be no night there, but in hell there will be nothing but darkness. If I were you, I, I'd get it straight right here now. Yes, sir. And all y'all folk with false teeth. I told him this in Sunday school. The late great preacher, Dr. Jack Evans, was once preaching at a gospel meeting, and he was talking about weeping and gnashing of teeth, sister way. And an old sister got up in the audience and said took her teeth out of her mouth and said, you know, what if you ain't got no teeth? And Dr. Evans said, don't worry about it. Teeth will be provided. <laughs> all right, all right. So if you don't have any teeth right now, don't worry about it. God will make sure you have some teeth to gnash. I'm done. Weeping may endure for a night. Joy is coming in the morning. Weeping nights, joyful mornings. Yes, sir. 
If you're not a child of God, you can't look forward to joyful mornings. Come on now. But it's so easy to become a child of God. I've told you, Jesus died on the cross for you. He was buried in a borrowed tomb because he wouldn't need it but three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. He got up from the dead and he ascended and went back to heaven and he's on the right hand of God and one day he's coming back again. Yes, sir. Those are the facts of the gospel. You must hear that. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. You must believe that he is the Christ. He said in John 8, 24, except you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins and where I am, you cannot come. And then he said, after you believe that I am who I am, that ought to move you to repent of your sins. Change your mind, change your will, change your action. He said, I tell you, nay, but I accept you repent. You shall all likewise perish. Luke chapter 13, verse 3, and then again in verse number 5. In Acts chapter 17 and verse 30, Paul on, out on Mars Hill said, In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but he now commands all men everywhere to repent. You actually need to repent of running your own life. You didn't made a mess of it already. Come on, man. What makes you think you're going to make it better? You ain't fixed it all this time. You need somebody who can do what you can't do. Confess with the mouth Jesus Christ is God's son. And then, yes, you must be buried in water for the remission of sin, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The song of invitation, Brother McDuffie. Pass me not. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Yes, Hear my hum. You see the way he's leaning back? He's thinking I'm going to change it. He, 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 he listening. I told you he's listening. I'm not going to change it. We're going to sing. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Do you need to obey the gospel? Do you need prayer? Do you need to be restored in your walk with God? Will you come right now as we together stand and sing? Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me. I'm calling you, Savior. I'm calling you Savior, oh Savior, why don't you hear my humble cry, oh wow, on others thou art calling, do not pass. for blessing all of us with the privilege, the opportunity to come together and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you all so very much for your presence, for, for your patience and your attentiveness as I've talked about weeping nights and joyful mornings. My prayer is that God has been pleased with the message, the motive behind it, uh, the content of it and the method of its delivery and that he has gotten the glory that Jesus Christ has been lifted up so he can draw all men to himself, that all of you who are children of God, that you have been encouraged, that you know that your weeping night's not going to last forever, and that one day morning is going to come with joy. And those of you who are not yet members of the body of Christ, the family of God, the church of our Lord, my prayer is that you will search the scriptures to see whether those things are, are so. And for all of you who are Christians, remember to do something that only a Christian would do. And whether you're Christian or not, remember God loves you. Jesus died for you. I love you. And I am your servant for Jesus' sake.
church say amen. amen. Please say amen again. Sister Ruth Wade is asking for prayer. Keep my husband William in prayer. Also my grandson Vincent Toller. Also my son Jerome Toller. Keep Sister Ruth Wade in, in prayer. And we want to continue to pray for Sister Wade and for her health. Sister Pamela Ely is asking for prayer. She's asking for prayer on behalf of uh, the disaster weather and weather victims, the homeless, and those victims who are subject to war, who are affected by wars. She also has prayers for, for the Ely family, the Draper family, and for the Davis family. Now, also, and we want to thank Sister, Sister Pam. She's asking prayers for a number of members of the, fa of the family who are with us this morning even for, for those members who are sick and not well. Brother Wayne, we, all, we always pray for Brother Wayne. We keep him in our prayers. Brother Curtis, Brother, Brother McLean, Sister McLean, brother, and, and, and my neighbors, Charles Hick, Hitchcock. Particular prayer for Sister Beverly Hood. We pray with and we pray for Sister Hood who recently lost her mom. And all the time that Sister Hood and, and all the time that Sister Hood was laboring with her mother's illness, she was visiting and going to visit with other members at the hospital. And I thank God for her spirit. Let us uh, now go to prayer for, for those names that I have called and, and for those causes. Blessed Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We pray, Lord, particularly on behalf of uh, our family, those saints that you have called to set aside, you've called them aside. And now, Lord, we have come together to worship and, and serve you. Thank you for the message. Thank you for the messenger. Thank you for its content. Weeping nights do lead to joyful mornings, as you have heard from, from as we have heard from your word. God always provides a way out. He always provides a way for his saints. And so, Lord, we bless you for being our Lord. We pray a special prayer and forgiveness on behalf of Sister Denise. We ask you her forgiveness, and we pray for her and with her. And we just pray for Sister Linda Knight. We pray for Sister Candice, who is still... Uh, praying for herself and for her brother. Brother, brother Wayne has an a, a, a emotional prayer, a meaningful prayer. 
and we pray for him and we pray with him. Lord, we, 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 all, we all have uh, family members who are suffering because of illness, especially medical illness. But you have given us a way. You have given us the vehicle of prayer that we can reach out and reach up and, and always look after and labor and come together for those, particular, those members. So, Lord, we bless, we pray a special blessing for Brother Nelson Jackson, Sister Peggy Jackson. We even especially pray for Sister Ebony, who prays for herself and, and her, her young people. And, Lord, we just thank you for blessing us. Thank you for causing us to set aside, giving us the vehicle of prayer, helping us to realize that you hear, you honor your 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 servant's prayer. We often marvel at having a father, a daddy who is always there for us and looks after us. So bless us, Lord. Bless the message. Bless the messenger. Bless all the hearts who have who have um, asked petitions for of prayer for other members who, who 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 are not with us. We just pray for them and we pray with them. We ask you to bless the University of Church university family bless the churches of christ throughout the country they are the ones who will be called home to come together to be with you lord if they continue in faith so lord bless us in jesus name let us all say amen my Lord. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid it as we were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquity chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with its stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, 
neither was any deceit in his mouth. I have read to you in part from the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah and his prophecy of the coming Messiah and the life that he would endure for the remission of our sins. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father and our Creator, we continue to thank you for your grace and mercy so that we have the privilege to commune with the saints. Now as we recognize the supreme sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, we ask that you bless this unleavened bread which commemorates his broken body and the fruit of the vine which commemorates his shed blood. And we pray that our collective preparation for this communion service is pleasing and acceptable to you. Let us all say, Amen. that discuss giving. Psalms 112, verse 5 says, Goodwill will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Proverbs 11:24. One person gives freely, yet gains even more another withholds unduly and comes to poverty. God supplies us with everything. Nothing that we have is because of our own works. So let us always remember to give back to God. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we come before you once again, thanking you for all that you do for us and all that you provide us with. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would bless these gifts and bless the givers. Bless those who wish to have given but weren't able to. Bless the stewards of these gifts, that they will be guided to do good works in your name. In Christ's precious name we pray for all things. Amen. I have one visitor's card. Uh, Dwight, Jamie, Aaliyah, Dalen, and Aiden Peters that are guests of brother and sister McHenry. Would you please stand so we can acknowledge you and know who you are. Thank you very much for coming with us. You are our honored guest. You could have chosen to go anyplace else, but you came here to be with us today. Hmm? Your ch oh, your children. Okay. Okay. 
I, di I didn't know you were that old. <laughs> yeah, I thought your children were all toddlers. <laughs> uh, once again, we want to remember uh, Sister Hood, be with her in her time of grief. Also, remember the Rodriguez family. Remember the people in Maui. That situation's not going away for years, so let's not forget them. Remember the people in the Middle East and the trouble that they're having. Uh, also, uh, remember Sister Perry is requesting prayer for her brother. Uh, Ronise Cotton, he's in the ICU at University Main Campus. And that's, uh, remember the, uh, our clothing giveaway and food giveaways. So let's uh, support those ministries. Anyone have anything else? That's yeah, uh, keep Shamika, Payton, and Carter, and Avi in your prayers. Um, just one, one, one quick announcement from the education department. You've heard Brother McClain make reference uh, to Sunday school and some things that came out of Sunday school. We're going to still encourage you to, to come to Sunday school. It starts at 9 and 9.45 on Sunday. Also, two weeks ago, we resumed, or the ladies resumed their, their ladies' Bible study, and we failed to mention that uh, last week. But uh, from, uh, uh, from that Bible study, if you will, through three different venues that's in person, via Zoom and on the telephone. We have 30 people to participate in that. I want to say thank you, thank you for that. The only problem with, with that is that your spot was still available if you, did not, if you didn't come. Also, for the next Ladies' Day, which is going to be November, I'm sorry, not Ladies' Day, I'm sorry, Ladies' uh, Bible Study, uh, which is going to be November 26th, I have some, some, some packets I would have to put out on the uh, table out there. So we may run out, but so if you didn't get one, ladies, if you didn't get or don't get a chance to get one of these, just see me either after service or next uh, or next week, and we'll run off some more for you, okay? I have nothing else. Anyone else? Let us stand and be dismissed. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, thank you, Lord, for everything. I just want to thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning. Thank you for allowing us to arrive here safely. Thank you for allowing us to come here and, and hear this wonderful message by Brother McLean that he preached. And please help us to take what we heard here this Sunday out into our works and our jobs that we can help people become, get baptized into Christ and to help people become Christians Please pray for Israel and Palestine that they will be able to have peace in the future and come to an agreement. In Jesus' name, as we are, amen.